that noise is not distant gunfire or charging elephants, but the rumbling of cars, buses and trucks resonating in the hollow deck of the Severn Bridge. This is the western end of the bridge at Beechley in Gloucestershire, next to the slipway of the long abandoned ferry that was the only way to cross the Severn south of Gloucester until the completion of this bridge in 1966. From a distance, the bridge appears as serenely poised as a ballerina, in the middle of an implausibly long, slow jeté. Up close, you realise that, like the dancer, it is working extremely hard. Every cable, shackle, bolt and spar, its muscles and sinews, are straining. No excess weight, no decoration, pure dynamic structural efficiency. At the centre of the span, you feel the throbbing and flexing in response to the movement of traffic and wind. It is alive. For me, this structure is inspirational. It speaks of the application of deep knowledge of the properties of materials and structural principles in pursuit of a single goal, carrying enormous loads across the void. Not only was this one of the longest spans to be attempted in the world at the time, but its huge towers had to be planted in fast flowing water with a massive daily difference between high and low tide. A road bridge connecting industrial South Wales to England was first proposed in the 1930s, but was rejected by Parliament after lobbying by the Great Western Railway. In 1946, the proposal was revived as part of the National Programme of Reconstruction that included a nationwide network of motorways. But post-war austerity delayed design work for nearly two decades and the complex construction of the foundations did not start until 1961. It is the pure elegance of this structure which marks it out from the suspension bridges that preceded it and many built afterwards. The deck is a series of 88 hollow steel boxes that are significantly lighter than a conventional lattice girder deck, greatly reducing loads on the towers and cables. They were fabricated in Chepstow and floated under the cables to be winched into their final position. The unique aerofoil section reduces wind loads and produces a very slender edge that is further sharpened by the delicately cantilevered footway on either side. The towers are formed from welded steel plates with their bolted edge connections on the inside to create an absolutely smooth surface. They are 5.2 metres wide at the base and taper to the top. The suspension cables are connected to the main cables and the deck by handsome cast steel shackles. After 50 years, the bridge looked as good as it did in 1967 when I first crossed it as a young architecture student, having persuaded a friend who was giving me a lift home to take a very long detour. By the late 1970s, traffic flows exceeded the predictions of the 1950s, and the 1982 decision to increase the allowable weight for trucks greatly increased the loads. Fortunately, the main cables were found not to need strengthening, but all 376 suspension cables were replaced and the towers have grown. They were reinforced internally with steel tubes that resulted in towers being 25 millimetres taller than they were originally. The bridge was designed to last 120 years. It is now almost halfway there and looks set to go all the way. <laughs>